Well, here, here I am at a lovely art group in Great Bado in Essex, and I hope you enjoy watching the demonstration that I delivered. Thank you very much. Lovely. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for asking me along again. Um, I've been here a couple of three times, I believe, um, at least, and um, um, and I believe you've asked for an autumn landscape uh, and specifically trees, which are, you know, um, to some people, you know, yeah, a little bit tricky. I mean, even well. To me, they're tricky as well, so hopefully all goes well. Um, there's just one thing I want to do before I explain the subject. I'm actually, this is the actual subject itself. Um, I believe you've got the drawing. Yes. Brilliant. So you can um, see where that's going. I'm also filming on YouTube, so if any of you uh, would like to just start the computer up, Search Colin Steed Artist on YouTube, click the link, and this will be there amongst, it will be fairly early on anyway. Um, and, um, but the first thing I want to do before I explain the subject, we're going to do a couple of silver birch trees, okay? And we may have one amongst these. And the point is that when you do silver birch, you've got to be lighter than the background, okay? So you either paint around it or you use masking fluid, right? So what I'm going to do this time, I normally do paint around it, but I'm going to use masking fluid, okay? Um, it's the Windsor & Newton uh, Art Masking Fluid. Um, it has color, a yellow color, so you can see where you've actually been. I'm going to use a very old brush, as you can see, um, it's beginning to get a bit rough around the edges. Um, it says number seven, but I would imagine uh, the amount of hairs I've got on there, um, it's probably uh, down to a number three now, I would imagine. Um, now, the, the, what I would recommend when, if you use just an ordinary brush with masking fluid, purely all you need to do is damp the brush and thoroughly damp it, twist it in the water, because that way it's fully loaded with water. Okay, so when you go into the masking fluid, it's only on the outside. Well, that's the theory anyway. Um, so let me show you, and of course, this is dilute with, with, with water, so it does um, uh, spread well. And I'm going to do that tree there, like that. And the art of this is not to paint too long before you go into the water again. Because once it starts to dry, then that's when it clogs the brush up. Then you can then continue painting. And I'm going to go right the way up the tree with this one. Okay, into the water again. So far, so good. It's not looking bad. And right, let's do the, the other one as well, shall we? And I'm going to go right the way up with that. You, Sometimes you, I tend to get uh, a little bit bogged down with the paint, with the actual painting of it, and then forget to go in the water. Um, but um, there you go. And I'm going to have one large um, branch coming off. Now, the larger branches on um, on these silver birch tend uh, to hold their white, but the smaller, younger ones are very, very dark. Okay. Um, so I've done one large one just to show this. The rest will just be a, a, of a dark colour. Now the other one, I'm going to leave that. I think I'll have that as a silver birch. And I'm going to lift off the paint there, right? So you'll get the hard edges from the real dominant ones in the foreground, which will give you detail. Then the lifting off of the colour, as you go away into the distance, you get a softer feel to... So that way you've got depth. If you mask that one as well, they'll be, both of them will be sharp. So you want, you want them to lay back a little. Okay, so that's really all there is to putting masking fluid on, really. Um, right, now while that's drying, let's have a look at the subject. Um, 
I've decided to put a couple of figures in. Um, I've moved them. I, I, they're a little bit to the left, so I've moved them in a little bit um, on the subject. But overall, that's pretty much as it is. And by producing a, this is a graphite pencil. Um, uh, so you, I use a, a light, medium, and dark tone of graphite pencil. And then you can actually spread the graphite across. So you, you, you color it in like that with your pencil. Then you get a damp brush and just spread it, and that spreads into a shadow you're actually spreading the graphite that's on the surface of the paper. So unlike ordinary pencil that doesn't do that, graphite will do that. And also, because it lays on the surface, if you're out sketching, if you don't spread it, you put it in your folder, and, um, and then you've got an image inside the folder of the, of the picture. Because it's a bit like, um, I suppose it's a, it's a little bit like uh, charcoal, really. You know, it tends to come off. So, but if you fix it like that, it's um, pretty much... Um, um, fixed to the paper. Uh, I'm going to have the light coming from the right hand side. Now that is fairly new to me because I've only just made up my mind. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay well what I would suggest when you decide to paint an autumn landscape just nip out and get yourself some autumn leafing. Come home and make some sketches of autumn leafing. And I've got the three stages here, really. I've got the early stage, which has lots of greens within it, right? Because I think, you know, you, it doesn't want to be purely uh, browns and yellows. Uh, it's always little bits of green, particularly in the undergrowth. Um, then I've got the, the more umbery siennas, um, raw sienna, burnt sienna used to paint that one. Then, when I've looked at something a little stronger, you can see some reds there, and a, and a different variety of leaf, with the yellows turning to reds, and burnt umber, which is the dark brown, the burnt umber. Um, and if you pick up some older leafing, that is the sort of colors we're looking that's laying on the surface on the path or, the, uh, or under the trees. Even last year's leafing can still be there, okay? Now that's the subject. Um, <clears throat> as I say, two lovely um, trees there, uh, a cluster of three. Those two, one is slightly behind the other, so it will stand a little lower down in the composition, okay? That one stands a little bit further back, but they're still fairly close, so they're, they're going to be of a similar sort of... Um, um, depth, so a similar sharpness. Um, then I've got a cluster of three. I've actually made that one darker than those two because I was going to have two, but I think what I'll do, I'll have the silver birch there and the two darker ones there, but we'll, we'll see how we go on that one. Um, <clears throat> then on the right, the figures, walking a dog, um, and just to hold in that right hand side, um, you've always got overhanging branches coming in. Um, just to hold in that other that right hand side. I've not actually drawn any leafing, but there will be texture to indicate leafing at some point. Good. Okay then. Well, I'm using my normal palette. Um, selection of colours. A um, little bit dirty that side, um, but um, this side I'll clean up. Um, but um, you'd be surprised. Into mixing, you know, I've got a bit of yellow into that one. You know, and, and all I do is just freshen them up with water. That's, that's about all you really need, just a quick freshen up with water uh, because they tend to dry. This time of year is not so bad, um, but in the summer they dry and go hard. I always loosen them up with water um, in each one just to give them uh, a little, so you can pick them out. I never work straight from the tube. I always allow them to go hard overnight. That's why I've filled all them uh, that's my newest one. That's a new one. Um, I think the light red is the new one. Um, the rest have been in there some time, um, but I like to leave them to go hard. Then moisten them uh, a half an hour, you know, just before you do your drawing or something, just to get them looser. So that's that. Now the brushes. Um, I've got a flat. Uh, oh, I, I do like that one. Uh, you, you tend to get brushes that, um, 
that you do like. Why don't you use paint straight from the tube? Purely because it is purely too liquid. You pick up too much paint, right? Because in watercolour, I mean, if it's oils, yeah, you've got to. But if it's straight from the tube, I know there are artists that do it, yeah. right? Um, and, but you have to be very careful because you can soon pick up, particularly if you're using a strong light, Prussian blue. You pull in some Prussian blue, you add a yellow with it, well, you want half a tube of yellow to bring it back to green, you know. Um, so, um, but if it's hard, you just get a wash of it, and then you can build it up if you need a stronger colour. <coughs> so that's really the reason why um, I allow them to go hard. But obviously they have to be loosened with water. Brilliant. Okay. Yes, by all means, if you, if you need to ask anything as I'm going, then no problems. Right. I'm going to probably use that one. I'm going to probably use that one. Um, well, I'm going to probably use all of them in the end. But, um, but anyway, let's start. Whoop there. Let's start with. I'm going to start with a De La Rowney number four. It's it's a mop brush. It um, it's lost its point. I do have one here that has still got its point, um, but. I'll use him a little bit later on, or her. I don't know whether it's a him or her. Um, yes. When you picked up your brush, you moved your... Ah, thank you. Ah. <coughs> I've got a bit of editing to do, haven't I? <laughs> okay. The brush I'm going to use is a number four Dale Rowney. Doesn't point, but I do have brushes here that are newer than this that do point. Um, I'm not going to use that water that I use for the masking fluid for obvious reasons. I'm going to use uh, the water out of my very old fairy liquid pot that I've cut the top out of and uh, um, uh, yeah, that's going back a bit. Somebody said to me once, it would be worth money if you hadn't have cut the top out. So, <laughs> yeah. um, okay, now that's nice and dry. Now. I'm not going to damp the paper. I want to show you how to load the paper with colour while you're damping, right? Um, if you work slow, it may be a good idea to damp uh, before you start, but if you damp as you work, the colours tend to hold rather than just run down in, in the damp wash. I know you probably wouldn't work at this angle. Um, at, a low, at a less of an angle, you wouldn't get the run down. Um, but anyway, Right, first thing I'm going to do, whoops. Oh, got a little bit of that in there. Let's just get that out. There we go. Oh, well, we might have more masking than we need. Um, right, now the first thing is the sun is coming from the right. Okay, we're going to have the sun coming this way, so we'll have shadows, but we will have shadows across the foreground purely from trees out of picture. Because this is the thing, there are trees out of picture. Right, so that's something you've got to be aware of. Right, well, sunlight is lemon yellow. Look at that, that's nice. Put a bit of red with it, mix it on the paper and you've got an orange. A bit more red and you've got an even more of an orange. There we are. Yeah, that's, that's looking good. A little bit lighter as it comes down. Keep it nice and damp. It is warm in here, so we do need um, to keep it damp. If it's too warm, I can turn it down. No, I think we're okay. If you're okay, so you know. Okay. Yeah, if you're okay, that's fine. I'm going to use Windsor Blue as the blue. Okay. And you'd expect it to turn green. Well, it probably will do now. Um, but the art is to just pull it across and allow it to lay on the paper and not mix on the paper. Get a bit lighter as it comes down and you get lovely sense of rays coming from that corner. And it will mix now on its own without touching. Once you start spinning around, you mix it and you get a, nice, you get a horrible green, which, you know, sometimes it doesn't make a big difference, but um, lovely. Right, I keep loading water because it's vital that we have um, a dark colour there for the blue, going lighter as we head off 
through into the uh, distance. And it has turned a little bit on the green, so that's, that's an advantage in the lower area. Okay. Well, that's my excuse anyway. There we go. There we are, a little bit of dark green there. Good. Right, now this is where we come to the, the autumn colours again. Light red. Let's put a little bit of light red in there. There we go. A little bit of light red going in. And the light red is then pulled out into that because you've got to remember there's blurred trees and touches of trees in the distance. You've always got to remember the distance. It's not... Uh, so you, you, I'm picking up autumn colours in amongst the greenery. Lovely autumn burnt sienna. Look at that. Still very, very wet that side. So let's come this side. I've masked the, um, the paper. So that's got that. Let's add a bit more yellow to that now. Give it a bit of warmth. A bit more warmth. And spread it rather than it hanging. That's it. Good. Look at that. Nice bit of depth there. That's what I like. Uh, nice to have depth because the eye is drawn to that distance area. Good. Um, I'm adding a little cadmium now, cadmium yellow. It's a slightly different yellow, but these are all the bulk of the trees in the distance. So picking up a little bit of that blue and just putting it in, it turns it slightly green. I've just found that little technique out as I was going. There we are. The key to this is keeping fresh colours. And they didn't look fresh in my palette, but to be fair, um, they're coming up quite fresh in the sky. And I'm going right the way down. Background's going to be darker. We're going to lift off paint there. Oh, aha. Let's, let's, have, a, let's have a splash of burnt sienna right in that corner there. Let's go a little stronger. Straight from the tube. There we are. Look at that little splash of burnt sienna for the undergrowth. There you go. And in the lower part of the undergrowth, I'm going to add burnt sienna with Prussian blue because that will give me a darker green. Quite a muddy green. Because this is the undergrowth just watching that, prefer that not to dry. So let's bash on. Cool, look at that. Cool, that's dark. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Tell you what, you learn all the time when you're painting. You know, it's... Um, you think, have I got that right? And then you think, well, let's go with it and see what happens, basically. There we are, that's looking good. And there is then, as it's beginning to dry, see the way it's drying? So I'm using the point of the brush to indicate some background overhanging leafing. Now it gives that impression that there is leaf shapes in the distance behind that glow of colour. Well, there you go. Right. Um, while that's holding there like that, quickly clean the brush. Now I'm going to use light red with a touch of cobalt and try and pull in that distant area there just before it dries. That's lovely. So that's that lovely bright distance. Then I'm going to do the path. So a bit more light red in there. As you come forward, I'm looking at these colours, you see, and I'm seeing reds and all of the colours I've used for those will be introduced eventually into the uh, subject. Painting over the dog, because that's going to be light. Sorry, dark. Um, too late now if I want it light, that's for certain. A um, bit more light red. And sweep through. Try and get that feeling of movement because this, 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 that sort of colour, a bit of raw sienna in there, 
There we go. That's it. Trying to pick up those, those dead leafing colours. Burnt sienna. There we are. And that goes up the bank a little in places. Look at that. And notice how I'm using a drier brush to get a film of texture. There you are. A little bit wetter now. And I'm going to pick up the real strong red now in the foreground. That's more that colour. Because some of these leaves have fallen and creating that uh, sort of more lighter colour and more fresher uh, colour. There we are. So we've got a thin look. See, because of the brush strokes are bolder in the foreground and softer in the distance, you've got that lovely funnel of depth. Right. So far, so good. <laughs> or am I speaking too early? Right. Let's look at... Um, we're looking at some more brownie greens just there. All right, so that's a lighter patch there. I'm going to leave that just a second. I want to see how that develops. Right, like that. So we've got from a we've gone a little bit darker, then we've gone lighter, not too vivid green at this stage. Got a nice damp area hanging there, waiting for for the paint to grow up into it um, as I paint the lower area. Right now we're going to go a little darker with our green. Yeah. So it's cadmium yellow with Prussian blue or Windsor blue. I'm actually using Windsor blue, but it can be either. And that can also grow up into the background like that and create another layer. See the way I've got another layer of hedging coming along? It's got semi-blurred in the distance there. Keep that nice and damp there. I'll drag that across shortly if I'm fast enough. Right, splash of light. Lemon yellow. There you are. Draw that off and pull that through there. Hmm, okay. Yep, that's fine. Then, let's go really light then. So let's soften that. Because under the trees, we're going to have a dark area again, just here, purely to actually show uh, the shadow underneath the, uh, um, the trees themselves. Now this is going to be a nice sort of cadmium lemon yellow green, but it's going to be dark. And it's quite uneven. The textured areas will come later on. And just a little bit along the edge there, Oh, a splash of burnt sienna. Yeah, hey, oh, look at that. Reds and greens are complementary colours, but they work well together, you know. Um, so I'm going to go a little darker there, just because I because I like that bit. So I'm putting another bit there, which whether that makes sense or not, I don't know. Right, clean the brush again. And I'm now going to use cadmium yellow for another splash of light. There we go. And then I'm going to go dark again, burnt sienna, Windsor blue, Prussian blue. Just standing up in that last little bit there. What about that little bit there? There we are, look. A little bit there, a little bit there. Ian King used to say that. A little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. He used to really annoy me, that did. <laughs> um, now I'm doing it, well, there you go. Um, good, yeah. That, you see how I've got the tones? Now what we're gonna do is put texture on and we'll give the impression of grasses. All I need to do is finish off this right hand side. I'm um, going to start off with raw sienna. Um, fairly light. Let's see if I can clean that brush thoroughly. 
raw sienna, there we go. I think that's fairly light, yep. It's got a nice bit of sunlight hitting that raw sienna. Notice I've never used, I didn't use the lemon yellow because that would have been too powerful. But the raw sienna is less of a strong yellow because it's in the distance. That's the main reason, really. And then, just a touch of green added to that, just to show a bush or some hedging, just running around the corner. Just drag that through with, the, with your finger there like that. Just blend it nicely. Because we want, we want to leave that distance very hazy, you know, interesting to allow the eye to run into the picture. You know, we don't want anything saying stop. We want to, we want to think, wonder what's around that corner. You know, what is around that corner? You want to walk into the picture. Um, good. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of this dull green again. There. It's just dried, so that's okay. That's no problem. Just lightly damp that with that. There we are. Then... I'm going to add cadmium yellow with a little raw sienna in that and I'm going to paint over the figures. I want the figures to be to have a light section behind them like that. Because I want those to be not in silhouette but I want them to be dark against the light, right? They could be the other way around but then I would need to paint around them and leave them white, you see, um, or use masking fluid, but I'd sooner paint around things really, but I just thought uh, it's a good idea to use masking fluid there. Um, good, now we can go into the bolder sort of um, uh, greens, a bit of cadmium in there, a bit of Prussian in there, a bit of bit of everything in there but the sounds of it it's all going in basically um, okay so that's that's good yeah and of course shape the brush to create overhanging we've got some hard leafing to come in there later um, I've got all the soft area this side the harder area will come in that side and then it gradually overhangs like that yep that's looking good. And then I can go darker then with that. Burnt Sienna, Windsor Blue, Prussian Blue if that's the one you've got. Because you've got to remember, we're in shade here, this side. So we've got a little bit of light coming through. So I'm not covering everything, but it's a nice sort of splash of Burnt Sienna again. I like using that, you know, because I can see these colours here and it does work well with the greens. Allow it to do its own thing. Um, yeah, let, let's go a little bit lighter again. Will that come up lighter? Yeah, sort of lighter. And that's the bank into that soft area. Just improve on that just a touch. There you go. And then you've got some darker little touches just coming out into that dry area. See, it's the soft and the hard edges that create the overhang of the, the hedging, really, as the hedge overhangs. They're, they're, they're brush marks that tells the viewer that you've got leafing or hedging or something overhanging, but it's not descriptive. It doesn't tell you uh, the shape of the leaf. It could be a clump of leaf overhanging. So it's all impressionist, really. And then finally, for this part, we just need to soften the edge of the track. Well, um, right, burnt sienna. A little bit of red in there as well. Um, and let's just sort of drag that across. Drag that across and then just spread it with your finger like that initially it's always nice to have a, a softer edge um, along there there we go just soften it up and then of course because of the 
that colour, I'm going to use raw sienna in that. Just to bring the bank level. Introduce the, the, the bank of the undergrowth to the foreground area. Um, and then, burnt sienna, which is dragged across. And trying gently not to cover up too many of them lovely warm washers. But you do need something because it is a rough sort of um, um, sort of track really. We've got lots of dark tones to come in. And then what I'm going to do finally is just draw off a bit of that just to show the angle of the track. There we go. And that will get too complicated in the distance there. <laughs> mm. I don't think the brush maker would be very happy with that one, would he? Um, okay, good. So that's that. Um, brilliant. So what we've done is, I think that's Probably the first stage, which is, you know, pretty much there. Um, we've actually looked at putting on a, an impression of a blue sky. Um, soft edge to the right where the light is coming. Hence, I've got the light that I've on display coming from that way. Um, then as we've come to this area, we've indicated blues. But there is some greenery and some warm colours amongst that that we can now play with to get texture to give that final punch. So at the moment, when you get to this stage, you'll have areas of dark colour, areas of light that you either... The, the dark colour you can't do anything with, you may need to go a little darker, but the areas of light you may, well you can, darken. Okay, so Always best not to go too dark too early. But I've gone fairly dark because, got my fingers crossed here, that I know how dark to go because I know what it's going to dry up like. Fingers crossed there. Um, who knows, but that's the theory of it anyway. Good. Right, while that's drying, it's not a bad time, as promised. I'm going to have a silver birch there. So I damp a flat brush, then remove a little paint, a little water from the brush, no paint there. So I've damped it and I've removed a little water. So a, damp a, a wet brush wants to lay on water, but a damp brush wants to draw, draw in colour because it's not loaded enough. So if you get the brush the right dampness, then you will loosen the paint and it will draw it off into the brush. So um, I'm going to have that one as the silver birch. There we are. See how it's gradually lifting off? Purely because... There we are. And you're getting a soft feel. Clean the brush because you would have paint in there. Away you go again. We're going up like that. You could have done this with the those in the foreground, but we wouldn't have got the depth of colour. There we are, and then we're going up like that. And we don't want to go too high with that one. We we'll just allow that to turn darker as it goes up. That's fine. So that's all there is to lifting off. Now, if you're using Saunders, if you're using rag paper, right, you'll find that it doesn't lift that good. But if you use the wood pulp paper, which invariably are the cheaper ones anyway, Bockingford, um, uh, there are some Canson's papers, um, and uh, this is actually a Canson paper. It's a lovely paper, um, and um, yeah, so basically, um, that's the first stage. If you can get anywhere near that, then you're on your road to a good or reasonable painting. 
Okay, well, the next stage is to put in the figures. While this completely dries, we, we don't want to remove the masking fluid until we... Um, uh, until the background is completely dry. So I'm now going to paint the figures. Now I'm going to use a, a Rosemary & Co number six. Uh, good old Rosemary, she, she makes some lovely brushes. Um, and um, we're going to paint the, the figures and the dog. Now I want the figures to stand out. So we want a, we want a sort of like a, a warm colour and a cool colour. Okay, now I've not used the Oliza in crimson uh, up till now, that's that one, because I want to use a different red to anything else that I've got in the painting. So, so that actually looks like a, a clothing colour and not a colour of the leafing, right? Just just to, to bring the changes, really. So I'm going to use... Um, Oliza and Crimson, could use Rose Madder if you've got that, uh, it's adequately as good. And I'm using a smaller brush, um, we're going to put a coat on there like that, an arm coming down, like that, then it goes in and out again, figures, you know, Basic figures like these are um, not that difficult to, to achieve, really. Now I'm going to use add lots of Prussian blue to that. No, sorry. Let's use ultramarine blue. That's the one. And I'm putting the legs in. Now this one is probably standing rather than like that. Then we'll just soften where they stand on the ground. There'll be shadows there later. Okay. And why not add a little bit of that blue while it's still a little damp, then you get a nice rounded shape to the left hand side. There we are. Allow that to bleed round nicely. Then you'll get sort of like a variety of colour. Now the, the figure in the background will be um let's go for a blue uh we've used all the blues let's just go cobalt a nice cobalt blue shall we yeah let's see what we get with that and being autumn they will be um um they will be wearing jackets and coats and what have you so that's um not too concerned if they blend together to be quite honest um it does help to pull the figures together I think that uh, that one is uh, that figure is um, looking at the dogs, um, which is um, or looking at the dog. There we are. Let's bring that down like that. A bit of green in there. That's fine. And don't mess around with feet. Just spread the. the just let them stand in the ground rather than. Uh, you know, once you start putting feet on them. Um, got lots of shadows to go there. And then the dog, we're just going to go with a dark, um, dark brown, really. Um, good idea to be quite dark. Um, and we've got the head up like that. Ooh, looks a bit vicious. <laughs> there we go. And very attentive dog, this one. And tail just coming out like that. There we are. And then there again, just spread that shadow across the base to sit the figure onto the ground. I'm going to give the, this figure here, the man figure, a hat like that. Um, and the face will be raw sienna. That's it, like that. And the other figure, the lady figure, will just be raw sienna. And the hair just coming down the back of the coat. And that really is all you need to do to put your figures in. Obviously you've got 
we can play with that now if we like. We can put shadow casting across some of them. I've already started a little bit of shadow work on that one. Maybe there's a bit of shadow that casts over one of them uh, and then runs across. But all will be revealed when we get in the, um, uh, the branches, the leafing, and the final shadow work. And that, you'd be surprised, comes up pretty quickly. Okay, let's have a short break and uh, we'll see you in about 20 minutes. Well, I'm at the halfway stage of a demonstration and um, everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. Okay then, let's um, look at finishing this subject off. Now, figures are in, uh, backgrounds in, the track, uh, the, the lane, uh, the uh, undergrowth uh, basically in. All we've got to do now, it's completely dry, is to remove the masking fluid and that should reveal the lovely white silver birch. So in theory we've got to now create a silvery effect there we are. I'm rubbing it away with my fingers. Uh, you can use a putty rubber, um, but um, I just prefer to do it with my fingers. Hopefully, I'm not putting oil onto the paper. Because if, if you rub it with your finger and it's a bit oily, sometimes it stops the paint from flowing. Um, but we've not got too much to do to those. Just make certain that's completely off like that. Here we are, so we've got the main foreground trees, silver birch, and we've got the single one in the distance and some darker trees. We're going to put some in round the back here and fiddle and play around a little bit. Um, okay, right, where do we go from here? Well, that is a good question. Um, do, we do, do we start with the darks or the mediums? First, I'm going to deal with this area first. Then once I get the tone of this in, then I will know how much I need or how dark I'll need that side. Because it, it is going to be very, very dark because it's almost in silhouette. Okay, And that will give it the whole picture, the punch. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, I'm going to use a round brush. Um, Oh, it's a number 10 look. Um, it's, I've worn the point away, um, and when I paint this, you'll see the reason why. Um, I'm, rather, uh, I'm rather rough with my brushes, you know. Um, but uh, I love them really, but I'm just a little bit rough with them. Um, but, um, okay. Now, we've got to try and uh, create a sense of leafing. Autumn leafing, but there will be some, you know, I want to have a little bit of yellowing and a little bit of green in there as well. Um, so, I completely load the brush with water, like that, so it's fully loaded. Um, let's look at starting off with the distance. These, you're going to have leafing overhanging from these trees really, uh, autumn leafing. So, what is our colour for autumn leafing? In the distance, it would be sort of a terracotta sort of colour. You know, this sort of colour a little bit deeper, somewhere that sort of colour. So what I'm going to use is light red. And it doesn't want to be too strong. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue, uh, ultramarine, just a touch of ultramarine. Um, in actual fact, that sort of colour, you end up with... Um, some near burnt, uh, burnt umber. So I might just as well have used burnt umber really. So, um, but there you go. So the light red I do like. And now I've removed some of the water on the brush. I've got the brush sort of has opened up, you know. And that gives me 
the opportunity to start to paint in the impressions of overhanging autumn leafing in the distance. They don't go too dark with this and try not to start off on the outer edge, right? Start off in the centre, there like that. And when you've got a clump of it, remove a bit more, you just rub across like that. And then you go to the point. And there is another branch there. I haven't painted it in yet, but that's why I've not painted any branches yet, purely because I don't know where they're going to be until I've painted the leafing. So get your leafing in first. A little bit darker up the top, so a little bit more colour as it breaks out into that top there. And this is all background stuff still because we've got the, the branches. So this is where the detail is, okay? But here it can be quite rough because we've got detail to come onto that, okay? So you don't want two lots of detail. You need detail when it's on its own, but when it's behind detail, keep it simple. Um, well, that's the principle of it all. But, um, and I'm just going to introduce a little bit of that there, purely because I just like the look of it. Um, what about, what about a little bit of, use the side of that brush just to create a, another little something going on there. There we are, it's nice and depthy still, you know, just to give that sense that there's something in the distance. Nothing too depicted, you know, it's just a suggestion, nice and light. Good, okay, now we'll continue being a little bit more rougher here because I'm going to use burnt sienna now with a little of the cobalt, uh, ultramarine blue. So that's not too dark, but a little stronger. There we go. And I'm going to go over that branch like that. I'm going to go over that. It's building up the impression of leafing. Don't go too dark too early. What other colours have we got here? Let's just stick. That's a technical term, stick. Let's stick a raw sienna in there. There we are. Bit of wobbling. It's purely background, this. Being careful not to completely cover. Uh, let's go with a bit more burnt sienna, quite a little bit stronger now because Quite likely, there's branches overhanging that one there from, there we are. See, once I go into the uh, lighter area, I have to be a little careful. Nice bit of red there, that's nice. Yeah, so that's the next stage. Just be careful you don't overdo that. Now, we're looking for a little bit more depth here. We're going to have one or two branches, but um, I just feel that, that that just needs a little bit more attention. So we're going a little darker. There, like that. A bit more detail. There we are. And notice I didn't stop there because it was quite a thick um, uh, area of colour. I didn't stop there. I've extended that through because that looks as if it goes behind that trunk. If you stop, it, it doesn't look right. You know, you think, well, should it go beyond that, you know? So um, it's like chimneys. I always say to people with skies, if you've got a dark blue coming down into a chimney area, extend it beyond the chimney. Don't finish at the chimney and then use another, you just go light again. You know, it's got to extend over anything that stands up. So I use that same theory really with uh, with with trees um, yeah yeah that's that's fine right now I'm going to look at 
going to introduce a little bit of yellowing now to the... Now this is a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of cadmium yellow. Um, when you run this back, you'll be able to hear the colours again uh, through the video. And now here, it's a bit more of a local colour. There we go. So that definitely overtakes those marks underneath. Okay, so we're getting denser, we're getting more stronger in colour. A little bit of um, blue in there, because I need some greens as well within that. And that will be, you know, that, that branch has got to have some supporting leafing and that may very well go out into the top again. So we can see that this is nearer than that because it's more intense in colour. Then as we come forward, we go even more intense in colour. Let's use burnt sienna into that. Uh, a little bit darker now, burnt sienna, Windsor blue. Oh, that's nice. There we go, look at that. And the brush is opened up nicely to create a semi-dark colour. And it's coming over there like that. See that area is beginning to fit together, beginning to look like um, um, a distance, middle distance leafing. A little bit more water. Burnt Sienna again, Windsor Blue, because this is going to give me the real dark tone, like that, and that will just hang on the bottom edge of those, and out into, there we are. We mustn't cover up too much of the under colour. That's what we mustn't do. There we are, look at that. Look at that. It's as easy as that, really. You know, it's, um, it really is uh, a matter. And you, really your trees, it's not until you put branches on your trees that they look like trees, you know. A lot of people would think, well, you know, they don't, you want to get in with the branches too early. Forget the branches, get in with the leafing first because complete all the leafing and then you can surprise yourself right at the end of how well you've done when you put the, the trunks in uh, and the branches. Well, that's what I'm working towards anyway. There you go, look at that. And just a little bit more, we've got one more tone of dark, but that's not going to become in at this stage. Just go over that one because that I can produce some leafing to that. Some oh, there's a branch there, so I want to put in some leafing there, just a little bit. And as you can see, the background colour is part of it, and yet it isn't. Um, you know, it, it's, it, we're get, getting the darker tones in. While I'm doing this side, I may as well carry on with the, um, uh, the undergrowth and all now. This is a slightly different technique. A bit more blue in this to start with because we've got little shrubs standing there. A bit more water required. Don't go too much water. Ah, oh, that's better. There we are, a bit more density. In amongst that patch of blue because that really is a deep area. Not going to put too much now behind that trunk, but I'm going to put in a shrub there, and that's going to stand down there. Look, there we are. And I like the look at that one too. It's all tonal as well as colourful. There we are. So you've got little, what are they, ferns, dead ferns? Who cares, you know? Um, we're not really worried what they are, you know. I often paint and 
particularly when I do cottages and people say, I'm doing a creeper of some sort. They say, oh, you've got a lovely clematis there. I said, yeah, I'm good at clematis. And the next person is, it's lovely sort of rambling rose. Yeah, I can do roses very well, you know. Um, whatever they see into it, you know, that's, um, that, that does me fine. Okay, right, now we're going to go dark, burnt sienna, with a touch of Windsor blue. Let's not go too dark, add cadmium to that. Cadmium yellow. We're still looking at these sort of colours. Um, let's see what, oh yeah, that, I, I like that, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. It's a little bit there, just soften that a little bit. There you go, look. That's it. And then soften that away. You, you have sort of soft areas and hard areas, you know. Um, soft edges and hard edges. Um, let's go a little bit more deeper green just at the base of that, just to give it a little bit more punch where you meet the light. And you've got to remember, the edge you leave there, you've got to indicate there's lighter grasses standing up, right? Because it's lights against darks. So, so if, when you get up close at the end, you'll see that there is, um, you can get the impression, it's not just a, 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 just a wash of colour, it's painted back in to allow grasses to stand up. Um, and, of course, not forgetting this side as well. And this side, you've got grasses standing up like that. And the reason I've done that, because I'm going to cast a shadow across there, and that will connect the two together, right? So, I'm already thinking about shadows this side. There we go. Good. Burnt sienna now to get that nice sort of dark. It's the start of that sort of silhouette effect. So we've got darks and lights. And then we paint back down. Don't forget to create a textured feel at that point so that it looks like grass is standing up. Keep it nice and there we are. And immediately, see see that background colour? That was a cooler colour, blurred. Now I've gone textured on top. You've got the darker leafing that's in shadow overhanging that sunlit lighter area. You know, I mean it's it's as simple as that, you know. Um, now we're going to go darker again, burnt sienna again. And we need to get a little bit bolder. If we use those little tentative strokes there, here, you don't get a feeling of depth. We've got to be a bit bolder with our, with our strokes. Hence, the brush is not going to point. Um, that's better. Look at that. Look. Not covering everything. But that's the shadow area, you see. It runs away like that. And then, quite likely, whoop, put a bit of colour on, you'll see a little bit of this here and there. Don't go over the light areas too much. Don't want the light areas, you know, that's a lovely light area. I'm going to put a, a, some little grasses here. Don't want to lose that. Same with that one. So what I'm doing now is coming in a little bit more. If you notice, it's the amount of water that I use that gives me the shape of the brush. Too much water, you get blobs of colour. Not enough water, and um, uh, you don't really lay any paint on. So... Look at that. See the way that brush is... Po Shaped, I like that, so I'm going to put a bit of that there. And then you rub it across the track a little, just to give a variation of tone. Once it, you lose the texture, there we are. See where I've now got lights, mediums and darks in swathes, where 
when I put shadow in, that justifies the shadow. So you've got to think ahead, roughly where you put the shadows before you start, and that's where that comes in. See where I've actually thought where the shadows will be, and I'm using the same sort of principle. You know? Um, good, so that's that. Right, now we've got to that point, it's not a bad idea to think about this area. Well, I'm going to ring the change it a little. I'm going to use Windsor Blue with, you notice I've thought this one through, haven't I? With, um, with, um, oh, why not? Indian Red. Windsor Blue and Indian Red. The Indian Red gives Windsor Blue a lovely, warm, warm mud, basically. <laughs> warm, muddy colour, you know. Um, but, there we go. So some of these branches have not got a great deal of leafing on. So although, you know, I'm not trying to depict every single leaf, you know, we do need to have the odd patch of leafing. And then we get more denser areas as we come down. And these will all be justified with the dark branches. Bit more blue in there. Quite a dark area there. Then it spreads again, a little dark area there. Then it spreads again. There we go. Just have a bit of fun with it, really, you know. Um, I would say it's knowing how far to go, and I think I've reached that point um, because we've got to get the branches in shortly. Um, good, yes, all going well. Okay. So that's basically it. Now, let's look at the trees themselves. Before I go with shadows, let's look at the trees. Um, what are we going to use for the trees? In the distance, um, that one, silver birch. These are, I um, don't know whether that hazel or something, quite small. Um, and um, I'm going to use like a grey. So I'm using a small rigger, doesn't hold a lot of paint this one, and I'm using, you can use any blue really, but I'm using ultramarine purely because I don't want to waste it, it's already in the palette. So um, there you go, ultramarine, and it wants to be of a reasonable tone, but not too dark. And when you paint these trees, paint in like that, and stop where there's a branch overhanging. Then you go again, and stop again, and eventually it goes up into the canopy. Then you paint in, let's just see where it's going to stand. I'm going to stand in front of that other one, shall we? There we are. And then you paint in any branches that supporting that leafing. Maybe some branches that haven't got any leafing on, because at this stage of autumn, Quite likely, the branches have lost a lot of their leafing. And then that just goes up into the canopy area like that. Put another one there. Oh, and I said it needs a bit of support on that one. There we are. So that's a distant tree, right? Sits back very nicely. The next one, um, let's have that a little darker. Shall we just, uh, you know, they don't want to be, so really that should stand slightly in front, so I'm going to stand that slightly in front. There we are, and that one goes up like that. A bit more water in there. Slightly darker. Not too dark, but dark enough to give, to give it a bit of punch. And it stops and it crosses that one there. Gradually gets lost behind that one. That's why I've left a gap. Make that just a little wider. That's why I always go more narrow. I'd, I'd recommend you go more narrow with your trees to start with. You can always make them wider, but you can't make them 
it's more difficult to make them more narrow. Then, of course, we've got branches running out there like that, crossing over there, crossing over there, and we'll have a branch coming out here, and that'll extend beyond there and go up there. Always nice to overlap branches um, so that you can definitely see that that tree stands in front. There we are. So that's the start of that uh, little clump. Now I'm going to use ultramarine with um, burnt umber. Don't know why I looked up there. I'm going to <laughs> Nobody's going to tell me, are they? <laughs> um, ah, that's it. Burnt umber. There we go. A nice dark brown. Now, don't be too dark. I've gone a bit strong with that, so just, I'm thinking I'm in the foreground, but I'll do the distant one first. And I'm going to do the lovely old, where these trees go into, these lovely silver birch go into the ground, quite often the trunks are quite dark. Then you get little nodules that sort of, I don't know where, that actually stand like that. Where perhaps there's been, or future um, um, branches will overhang, you know, could be that. And then, of course, we can then use that colour to produce a branch going right out like that, coming away from that trunk and just blend it like that. Um, let's have another one there, another one there, another one there. Just a little cluster of them here and there. Oh, let's put, put one on there. There we go. That's nice. So that's, you know, just needs a bit of shadow. Now we'll look at these larger ones um, because this is the dominant areas, okay? So there again, nice dark edge there, where that meets the, the ground. And I will use a, another brush just to soften that. Don't want too many hard edges of that because it, it does blend. There you go, look at that, that's better. Just where it meets the, there we are. And then we go with these nodules again, a little bit larger. Drop them into where it's gone damp too. A uh, bit gnarled there. Big one there. One or two little touches there. And by you leaving just white paper, you, that really stands out against the dark. You've got to go dark enough in the background, but not too dark. Good. And of course, that little nodule there was a slip when I laid the um, uh, masking fluid on, but we can turn that into a branch. Goes up like that. And then remove that and blend that in. There we go, look at that. Now we can really get excited and start putting in the more very important branch work. And of course this one then turns into a dark tree and that supports, just turns into that darker area. What colour have you got there? That is, uh... <laughs> oh I know, ultramarine and burnt, <laughs> look up there, it's on the roof. Um, it's ultramarine and burnt umber. There we are. That's my favourite colour, as you can tell. Um, and uh, for um, branch work, really. Uh, another smaller branch off there. And notice this brush, it soon runs out of paint. And a rigger generally shouldn't. But I love this little brush because, because it runs out of paint, you get lovely broken areas of colour, which, uh, which is good for silver birch. Where it meets there, soften that with the finger. There we are. That's looking good so far. Um, do we want uh, another little one? Just This is smaller. Just one or two smaller ones just heading off now. Don't overdo this branch work, but um, it is nice to 
have the smaller little branches overhanging coming away there good yeah okay and away we go again similar sort of effect for this one paint down like that and then soften with a damp brush there you are there and then when you paint this at home this one just just do that little section you know just do a section of it you know it's uh, it's no you don't really need to paint all of it in not straight away you know just do a little study of silver birch i mean ideally it is nice to go out onto gallywood common and sit there and paint them you know that's where you really learn but quite often when you're learning, you see too much when you, um, uh, when you paint from real life. It's always best to paint from a, another artist's um, uh, painting, really, because to start with, they are sorting out the, 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 the main... Um, they're, getting, they're getting the problem sorted for you before you, before you start. It's just building up confidence, really, to, to know um, where you're going and what you're doing, really. Um, and then there's another branch there yeah oh that'll go over that okay that's fine a bit more water um, yeah let's make that a bit more solid and then we have another branch coming off of there which is going behind there we'll have another one there not actually following the drawing that I had originally well to be quite honest I can't see the drawing I had originally so um, but it's always nice to draw them in uh, fairly early on uh, with pencil. Uh, it, it looks like a tree then before you start to paint. Um, and hopefully, after you've finished painting, it still looks like a tree, um, all being well. And there's another one there. Good, okay. Brilliant. Now, yes, we're okay for time. Good. I can relax. Right, now we've got the very dark branches to the overhanging trees. Now, this is where you've got to be a little bit careful. That one starts off out of picture. So pull that right out of picture. Bit more water to that. There we are. You've got another one there that heads into that clump, then breaks out again. This one then comes up like that. Now, you see, I'm justifying the texture I put on there with the branches. Um, are we going to... Oh, yeah, let's have that one going off there. And, of course, gradually lifting off as you go. And all of a sudden, you've got that sort of uh, impression of leafing in sort of tonal leafing in uh, in shadow really then you've got another one here that's got to come off there like that another little cluster there there we go let's just make that a little bit there we are all of a sudden you've justified the texture you put on earlier now while i've got this lovely dark brown um, I'm going to um, indicate some odd little touches here and there just to give a bit of texture before I put in the shadow work. So we're, we're, we're suggesting uh, some sort of, sort of grasses really, uh, providing you're a bit careful with this. Um, I keep saying that because I'm telling myself. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you but I'm telling myself as well, you know because it does take, um, you can soon get over. Yeah, I think we better call that a day. Now, finally, it's that all important shadow work. Now, we can see on the sketch roughly where they're going to come. So, the only other thing we need to think about is what color to use. Well, 
If we just use a dark brown, um, unfortunately, we'll end up um, with all browns. Right? We want a shadow colour that's totally different. Right? Um, so a nice purpley grey. So you get that subtle shadow that you get in autumn. Autumn, because there's plenty of gaps in the branches, you get a more subtle shadow. In the summer, you get a solid dark shadow. Okay. Now I'm going to use the mop brush, number four, Dale Arrowney. Um, it's, it's a synthetic brush, points very well, because I may need to point up as well as getting broad brush strokes. Okay, right, now what colour? Um, I think today we will use... <laughs> actually, I've changed from that, Bell. <laughs> I've actually changed from that. Um, what I'm going to use, which may surprise some of you, certainly surprises me, <laughs> um, Windsor Blue... Right, and Indian Red, Indian Red, Windsor Blue, Indian Red, there we go. Now you can get a cool colour or a warm colour, cool colour more blue, warm colour more red. Well for the distance I'm going to go for a cooler colour and not too dark because we don't want a real dark shadow in the distance. So, um, let's just take a little bit, let's just test and see what we've got. Oh yes. Right, that's the first start of that subtle bluey grey. Just taking a little bit off of the, the brush because I'm just going to put a little bit of subtle shadow in the distance there. It's always nice to have, you know, a little bit of shadow beyond the, the main figures, but nothing too, nothing too much. Brilliant. Right. Now I'm going in a little bit more red in the mix. Um, okay. Right. From that clump, we have shadow that. And the dog is getting shadow on that. And just gently tease that away. And that shadow runs up the bank in places. And across like that. Bit more red. Bit more blue. Not that much. <laughs> bit more blue. There you go. That's the one we're looking for. And now we've got to pick up the dappled light. A bit more blue. Running down and across. And this is why I've got the, the brush that points, because I want to create a film of dappled light. So in other words, some dark areas light areas and just a nice bit of light there it will only be revealed properly when i take the surround off and you've got to remember it will dry up considerably lighter and then we have that shadow there and we just cover that base up with a little bit of there like that because it's all very, very dark, but it comes into light. And the same this side. I like to have that nice dark foreground area. And then I've got to justify that shadow by dampening the back edge of that tree, like that, and laying this shadow down the back edge of that. There we are. And you get a soft, subtle shadow until you get up into the top where it's mainly um, 
There we are. Yep, just a little bit more shadow. Don't want to go too dark with this shadow down that edge there. And we soften that in. And we stand that up. I'm going to produce a little bit more like that. There we are. And let's do the other one as well. So we just lightly damp. And don't go too high up with that. There we go, down the back edge of that, like that. Then we take a little bit of light into that area there. They don't like me, these brush companies. Well, they do, purely because I've got to um, buy new ones, that's the problem. There we go. Do you ever use sable? Um, occasionally I do. Um, but, you know, they do come a little bit expensive, yeah. you know. That's the biggest problem, but... Um, okay, now into that, I'm now going to add a little bit of sort of dark green just to ring the changes. Some nice real strength of tone into that damp area. And a bit like that. So you can play, you know, watercolour. A lot of people say to me, you know, certain stages you, you can't really do any more. You have to be a little careful. But there are things you can do to um, paint over, to paint in, um, create texture. And that's what I'm doing now into this foreground. Just creating texture. See the way I'm just dotting around, you know, just trying to create a feeling of texture without losing too much of that light. Sometimes you have... <coughs> Little shrubs just coming in on the top there. One or two little touches there. Don't go too much, just on that edge there. There we are. Just another, see I've used a really dark area there, but then I've got a little bit of that there. But of course, you've then got to look at this side to balance the whole thing. So you then go a little bit dark there, just to help balance the composition. And of course that runs away. Then, I think we can do it with this. We then use this brush to pull across to create that texture again. That gives a sense of something going on in this track area. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much as I would have thought. I think those figures probably um, are pretty much um, complete. There we are. Just one or two little touches required on the underside of that, because that's obviously in shadow. But then the top is light. There we go. Um, Good. Okay, let's do the big reveal and see exactly what we've got. Okay, well that's the finished painting, uh, as far as I think I need to go as a demonstration. But there's one thing you must do, is to sign your work. No matter what your ability, always sign your work. Um, even if it's just down, you know, I only do mine in a corner. Um, just to keep it a bit more discreet, let's put it down here. With a rigger, let's just load that a bit more. It doesn't have to be prominent. So long as you have a signature that you always do on your art. As you can see, you can barely see it. Okay, well... I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, look at painting um, a woodland scene. 
Um, if you have, um, nip onto my YouTube channel and uh, if you're not already done so, click subscribe um, and you'll be another one of my many subscribers. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you all again very, very soon.